Hi all, I hope you're doing well. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use breakout rooms um, with your pupils in order to enable them to do online group work and collaborate um, with one another uh, using voice calls. Um, I've tried this out with a few of my classes. They've really appreciated it. Obviously, you can work with things like programs like Google Meet to um, have a whole class together. Um, but often a lot of people are either intimidated by that environment or there's just too many different voices, there's too many different pupils to try to include that they don't get that sense of interaction that they may be um, are craving at the moment or being isolated from one another. And I found that um, splitting them up into smaller groups and enabling them to work together on, say, Google Docs or um, slides or, or just even working through a set of activities together and talking about it as they work through is a really good way of simulating what happens uh, in a normal classroom. Um, as ever, I'm us using Screencastify, as you can see, to make this recording. Uh, you can see how I do that um, by looking at one of my previous videos. So right now you're seeing a webcam, uh, sorry, the camera from my desktop and you're seeing my desktop screen. In order to um, carry out um, to set up uh, breakout rooms, you have to do a little bit of setup in advance for your classes, and I'll show you how I do that. So first up, you'll need to create a couple of different um, documents. Uh, one of the documents that I use um, is one, I say breakout rooms is the document, and it says, when instructed, use the breakout room you are assigned to by clicking on the link below. Just like in a classroom, all conversations should be school appropriate, use audio only, not video. I just find that makes um, for less distractions and it'll uh, enable the pupils to concentrate a little bit better as they work through um, the project. It says, I may join your conversation to offer suggestions, but please be aware that most of the time I will have each conversation muted on my computer. If you want to ask me a question, then go back to the main call and unmute yourself as I will leave that audio on and will hear you and respond to you there. Alternatively, write me a note in Google Classroom, which will send me a notification. So this is just some general information that I put there as a reminder for each of them. I've already talked to them about this um, process as well. Uh, other things that I need to have set up, um, one is my breakout room generator. So this is a Google Meet generator. What I have here is the standard route for the lookup mechanism in Google Meet. So you can find this a number of different ways, and I can um, you can find this a number of different ways, but it is https colon forward slash forward slash meet dot google dot com forward slash lookup forward slash. You'll, you can come across that in a few different ways, um, but the critical thing is at the end of your standard Google uh, meet.google.com, you have forward slash lookup forward slash. After that, you can write pretty much whatever you want, but within your school, within the, the school that you're working, um, it should be unique to you. So for example, let's say I was going to write in here, okay, demo lesson main room. Now you can just throw in a bunch of uh, random letters here, it really doesn't matter what you put. I just quite like it to um, the room to be named, uh, something to do with uh, what we're doing. In fact, maybe I'll just even remove them on the front so it says lesson main room. I would normally put my name on here or something like that to make it unique to me. Then what you can do is you can copy this and place that into a new um, web address like so. And that will create a Google Meet for you with the room name, whatever you wrote there. So lesson main room, that's going to be my main room for my lesson um, that I've put on. Now, you can share that shortcut that I just pasted in with your pupils. So it doesn't always work with many of the pupils. I found that quite often pupils struggle to get into our classroom using that mechanism. So I'm going to show you uh, what I would do uh, with this. The next thing I do is um, initially uh, mute my microphone, turn off my camera, and then um, I would uh, copy this. Sorry, I would go into the classroom. 
And when you go into the classroom, that gives you a very reliable web address that you can use as your main meeting room web uh, address for pupils to join. If I go to my Google Classroom for this class and set up a classwork thing, I can say, OK, this is my demo breakout room lesson. Join us on the meet call below. Reminder to pupils, you should join the call with your microphone and video off. I ask them to do that um, to reduce distractions as more people are coming into the call. And then I can ask them to unmute whenever they have a question or whenever I want to ask them a question and they provide an answer. So I'm going to add that link that I just copied to this assignment. So when I uh, assign this at the start of my lesson, all my pupils get this link and this is the class video meeting. So they'll go into this one. When they get there, I'll be able to explain to them what we're doing next. But you can see I've also attached here another document which says breakout room assignments. Something else that you should set up before um, running this lesson is the mute tab ability. Now, unfortunately, when Chrome updated a while back, when you right click it, it used to say right here, mute tab. Now it says mute site. And that's not very useful for what we want to be able to do in a moment, which is in the muting individual tabs, not muting individual sites. If you use mute site, it will mute everything that is linked to that. So if you mute a Google Meet, for example, it will mute all the Google Meets that you have open. Instead, you need to install a mute tab um, mini program to your Chrome. If you go to the Chrome Web Store, there's loads of different mute tab ones available. Uh, so I've installed this one here and it appears as a little icon up here. I actually have two little different uh, mute tab things here because I was trying two different ones. When you have one of those installed, you can just click on it and it will mute this individual tab. Now, there are some problems with this mechanism. and I'll talk about how I overcome those um, later on and what the issues are. So back to my class, you can see that they can join this Google Meet once I've assigned it, but I also have this breakout room assignment. If as part of my lesson, I want them to split into groups, I'm going to be using a docu this document that I had earlier. Now it might be that I want to write in the names of pupils okay, into um, the document before the class. Or it might be that I want the pupils to choose their own groups. I might say on the call, hey guys, you know, I want you to get into groups of three. I found it works pretty well with pupils being able to edit this document and add their names in. They kind of organically shuffle themselves into groups of the size that I request. I can see this and I can ask them, you know, maybe, hey guys, you know, we've only got two in this group. Can we have a couple more move over? Things like that. Or I can direct them um, through the call that we're having. You can see I've got a second column here for assigned breakout room. With one of my classes, I actually had a column in between these two that was a topic. So pupils were not only choosing who they were going to work with, but they were aligning those with particular topics they were interested to work on together. But I've simplified it here. So we've just got pupil names and then I'm gonna assign them a breakout room. At the start of the lesson, I keep this blank. You don't want to do the setup for this too early because unfortunately the um, Google Meets that you're going to set up do tend to expire after a little while. It seems to be after about 10 or 15 minutes or so. But you can generate these breakout rooms really quickly. Let me show you how by going back to my generator. I can call this one a demo uh, a breakout um, one. I could have another one, I'll just copy that down here and call it demo breakout two. Oops, emo, not emo breakout, demo breakout two. Okay. And we could have demo breakout three, etc. And you can see that we could generate quite a lot of these quite quickly just by throwing these on. For each of these ones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again copy it into a new tab, paste it so that I have my Google Meet. Um, here, this is going to be my Google Meet for this first tab. Now, the critical things are that you mute this site, 
You don't want to be hearing all these separate side conversations at the same time. So mute this side, mute your microphone, mute the camera, and then join the meeting. Once you've done that, you'll get the uh, joining info here, which you can just copy. Go back to your breakout room um, that the pupils are signing up in and paste it into the space that's available. To make this link in the middle here live so that they can only have to click on it, just go to the end of the link and press return. This will create a link that pupils can join. They can only join this, uh, they can only join this link, of course, after you've pasted it in here. Notice that this has created a code that is different from that nickname that you gave to your room. But when the pupils go to that room, when they go to that code, let's say we click on it like this. Let me open the link. When they go there, one of the nice things you'll see is that it'll give that same name of the rooms. So it says demo breakout one. And they, you can see that I'm already on this call and they can join the room along with their peers. And again, I'll have told them, make sure you switch off your video um, so it's just audio in your discussion with your peers. Obviously, you're going to be doing this multiple times. So we can do the same thing for our next group. So I copied it, create a new tab, paste, and mute this new tab. I'm going to switch off my video. I'm going to switch off my microphone, hopefully. There we go. And I'm going to join the call. Once I've done that, I'm going to copy the joining info and assign it to the next group. You can say, see for each one of these, it does take a few seconds to do each one. Uh, once, you, once you're quick, you can get each one done in about 15 seconds or so. Uh, it doesn't take a very long time, especially if you've already set up the names for your breakout rooms here. And the pupils will then be populating these different Google Meet um, rooms. The nice thing about this is that they will be able to be in an enclosed group. They'll be uh, with their um, peers in that group. And at any time you want to, you can unmute the tab, hear what they're chatting about, switch on your microphone and contribute to their conversation. Okay, so you can be like, okay guys, you know, let's make sure we're focusing on the work. Let's um, maybe, do you have any questions for me? Things like that. And you can throw that into that particular chat before muting and muting the tab and going to a different group. And so you can have lots of different groups working at the same time. One of the things that I recommend doing is when it comes to your main lesson room, that you leave this one unmuted. Leave it unmuted, but mute your microphone so pupils aren't getting feedback through. I would encourage pupils to mute the main lesson room once they're in a different room so that they don't get feedback through their computer. The reason I leave this one unmuted is if a pupil wants to get my attention, they can simply come back into this main room and say, Mr. McCall, and I'll be able to hear them and respond to them. I also encourage pupils, if they don't have quite such a pressing issue, to chat, ask a question in the chat here, because then, even though I'm not listening to every tab, when I go across between tabs, I can see if they've left any messages for me. Um, and so then I can jump into their conversation and talk to them about it. I mentioned that there is an issue uh, with some of the tab muting here. Um, it's a bit frustrating that this doesn't work particularly well in Chrome. Uh, I've noticed that occasionally when you have, uh, so I had five groups uh, working at one point, one of the tabs became like a master tab where it muted and unmuted two other tabs. It was a very strange situation. Um, so I could only either hear lots of groups or none of them. Um, to deal with that, I recommend uh, using a different browser for the actual chat function. Uh, if you use something like Microsoft Edge, uh, which I've got right here, uh, you can see that uh, Microsoft Edge, if you right click on the tab, it says mute tab directly in here. And you can quite easily join, oops, uh, that's the wrong 
thing there. I can trim this down there. You can quite easily join those same conversations via Edge instead of via Chrome. So you can see I can jump straight into one of these other conversations, jump in here, and this is much easier to mute an individual tab rather than um, having the issues that I mentioned before. So just recommend that as one way of getting around that problem. If you're finding now, some of my colleagues have found, have tried this out and found that they don't have that issue. That's great. If you don't have that issue, keep working in Chrome. That's fantastic. Keep doing that. Of course, at the end of class, you can dip into each of these or whenever you want this group activity to end, you can dip into each of these different conversations and say, hey folks, you know, it's time to come back to the main room. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of a debrief all together. And I found that pupils are able to make that transition pretty quickly. And they can swap back to the main room. One thing to note, um, if you leave one of these meetings when there are pupils still in it, that conversation will remain live, but you aren't able to supervise it. Now you would be able to go back in and you could talk to those pupils again. But if you leave a meeting, the pupils are not kicked out. However, if the pupils leave the meeting and you are still there and you're the last one there, when you leave, if there's nobody left in the meeting, the pupils can't go back in. So that's a really useful little thing um, that Google have introduced. If you are in a meeting as the teacher who set it up, your pupils join, if they leave and then you leave, they can't go back in and have another conversation uh, unsupervised. So that, that can be a useful thing. I'm very transparent with my pupils about, just like in a classroom, when they're working in these environments, they should be expecting that I can hear what they say, even though I'm honest with them in the fact that um, they won't always, I won't always be listening into them, so they can't just ask audio questions because most of the time I'll just be dropping in on different groups. And I try to make it fairly um, public when I'm there. I don't want to think I'm constantly snooping on them, um, but I do want them to be aware that um, there is um, that possibility that uh, I can hear what they say and, and just help hold them uh, to a bit more accountability while they're doing their group work. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any um, questions, please feel free to post them to me. Um, yeah, group work. I've, I've tried it out with a number of different classes. Pupils really appreciate the chance to interact with their peers and um, I think it really promotes that classic classroom environment that they need um, to bounce ideas off each other and um, to develop their learning more. Stay well, stay safe, and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Goodbye.